Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I'm on day 265, oh my goodness, of my 365 days of color. And in this tutorial, I'll show you how I painted this rainbow kitty, and I'll also talk about some changes I'll be making to my YouTube channel, which will also affect my masterclass at the end of this video. All right, let's get started. So if you're wondering, this is a 16 by 20 cotton canvas. I'm using acrylic paint. After I lay down the sketch, I apply a base. So my main goal here at the beginning is just to cover up the white, starting with the background. This is a Berman Blue Point long-haired cat. I have really been itching to paint cats, both wild and domestic. I'm gonna be painting lots more like this in rainbow style. But not only did I choose this because I was inspired to paint cats, but also because I really love painting subjects that have the light source behind them, so there's almost this glow around them. I find that this actually helps me to place color because I know first and foremost where the light values go. And then on the opposite side, we have our strong shadows that's facing away from the light source. And we see that in this cat's tail and around the limbs. And even better, we also have a strong light source in one area. Here, it's only hitting the cat from the upper right. So what this does is it creates strong contrast, which gives us more to work with so we have more direction on color, as opposed to if it was all lit up in the background. Now later in this video, I'll be talking more about the backgrounds that work well with this style of painting, but here I jump straight into the cat even with the background not entirely finished. Now if you really wanna master painting these rainbow style animals, there's two things I recommend. First, before you apply a single brush stroke to that animal, take at least 20 minutes to mix up colors. Use your palette knife or paintbrush to mix up both the more realistic colors that you can spot, and then play around to see where you can add maybe some violet, or some phthalo blue, or some raw sienna, or maybe some yellows to get your more abstract colors. Now the exciting part is you can go so many different directions with these abstract colors. But my secret is, if I see real light areas, I'll use a light yellow or a light orange or light pinks. If I see blacks or dark browns, I'll use phthalo blue or violet with very little white or of my other lighter color. If I find an area that's not real dark and it's not real light, it's right there in between, I'll use some raw sienna or some lavender or a combination of both. Now this is key here because I'm painting a white animal, I need to make sure that I don't go too dark, that I start to make the cat look like it's gray or tan. So I added white to all my colors, except for some of my real dark values. And that leads me to the next tip. If you wanna master this style, you must master value. We're not trying to match the colors that we see in a reference photo, we're trying to match the value. So if I was working with a, a reference photo that was black and white, those are all different scales of gray or different gray values. Now we also need to be concerned about how we're applying our brush and the shapes that we're creating. This is a long fur cat, so I'm gonna cluster lines with a thin amount of paint on my flat brush. I like to use a large or medium flat brush for this type of cat, and I'll do two things. I'll cluster lines to create the shape of the fur, which is long and lays in a certain way, but also I'll cluster lines to create its own shape of color. You see how the different values kind of create their own shapes. Now I'm not so concerned about having precise lines at the beginning with those first and second layers, but as I layer after layer, I'm gonna use smaller brushes. I'm gonna move my hand a little bit slower and just be really precise with each strand of fur. And speaking of brushes, if you're new to my channel, I am a fanatic of Arteza. All things Arteza. I use their paint and I'm always using their brushes that's actually all the brushes I'm using right now are from the Arteza Variety Pack and the Detail Brush Pack, which I always have linked in the description box. Now at this point, I wasn't done with the cat. I still had a lot of work to do on the tail and the eyes and definitely more layers on the fur, but I needed to finish that background before I finished the cat. 
That way my final step is layering that white fur on the outer edge of the cat, cutting over top the background. Now this was probably the most challenging background I've ever attempted because for one, the cat's not that far away and so the background needs to be somewhat loose and blurry but also parts quite detailed. And then secondly, I really needed to manipulate my colors just right so that the far left, the leaves, the grass, and the lower leaves needed to look like they were barely touched by the light. So how that translates into color is on the grass and leaves in the upper right hand side, I'll use lots of yellow. That's cadmium yellow, even some white and grass green. Now the leaves and grass on the far left, I'll hardly add any yellow. It'll just mostly be grass green and lots of black. Now don't be discouraged when you're applying these darker values and these darker colors. Acrylic paint will dry darker than how we see it when it's wet. And that's what happened to me when I was painting these leaves. I would paint in a leaf and it would just vanish because of how dominant black is and how it overpowers any hint of yellow or green. So each leaf I had to redo about five or six times at least just to make that color stand out, but still keeping consistent with that light source. Now I know I say this quite a lot, but I'll say it again for those of you who are new to my channel or you're a beginner, you want to make sure you have the background completed before you complete your animal. If that overwhelms you because you're not quite sure how to finish your background, definitely work on the inside of your animal, like the nose or mouth or eyes or even parts of the fur, just not on the outer edge. That you want to leave to the very end, where you can cut over top that background with that fur. This isn't as um, important when you're working with short-haired animals, but it definitely is with curly or medium or long fur animals like this cat. And pairing the right background with your rainbow colored animal can be quite difficult because if we have such a colorful animal, do we also add lots of color to a background or do we keep it just one color or more simple? That's dependent on the artist. That's entirely up to you. But here are some of my suggestions to balance out a painting with a very colorful animal such as this. So you can keep the background more simple. You can go with realistic colors like this one, which helps to balance out the more abstract colors in the animal. Or if your animal is primarily cooler colors, you can go with a warmer background. Or you can do kind of a fade where you have one side of the painting lighter and then it fades to darker on the other side. All right, so it's time to pause and reflect. There is always a life lesson to be learned, which I always try to document in my paintings. Now I call this painting, You Were Chosen to Shine. Now today is the first day of fall. Let's hear it for pumpkin carvings and apple picking and hay rides and Halloween costumes. Now, not all of us, but depending on where you live, most of us go through these seasonal changes. We have to let go of some things so then we can gain some things in the next season. And it's when we make those changes that it helps us to thrive. But on the other side, when we fight those changes, we can often miss out on lots of the blessings and even the breakthroughs. Now, many of you don't know this, but this entire month while I painted this cat, I took an entire month off of my work. Content creation, aside from this one that I squeezed in, but all I did was prayed, rested, and painted. And when I say painting, I mean not a commission or not for a tutorial, but just whatever I felt in that moment to paint or draw, I did it. Now I'd like to say that I had planned this beautiful restful month, but it wasn't. It was forced. Complete burnout that I had experienced in August where, no joke, I forgot to drive. I was driving my manual car with my children in the back and I had reached such a level of sleep deprivation and exhaustion that guys, I couldn't remember how to drive stick shift. But thankfully I didn't panic, I took a deep breath, I slowed down the car, it went to the right lane. I was able to just coast a little bit and figure out 
on the road how to drive manual, but man, was that a red flag. So this month off has been a gift, one that I really don't want to take lightly because I know most people can't have this opportunity to take an entire month off. But after lots of prayer and lots of painting, I do feel like the Lord is calling me to let go, let go of a lot of the things that I do in my business and to make room for new things that are coming. It's not a change that I necessarily want, but I know that it's the right thing. I know that I must be obedient and just trust the Lord and what he has for me. And I also know that the Lord has chosen me to shine in all the roles and every season that I'm planted. So to shine as a mother, to shine as a wife. And I know he also has things in the future for me to shine in, but I have to make space for those things. There's a verse, John 15, that says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear much fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you. Now, there's just so much goodness that comes out of this verse because not only can we rest knowing that we were chosen, that he has doors that only we can walk through, but we also have the complete freedom to ask our loving Father what we want. The Lord invites us to ask him for what we want and what we need in that season of life. And if we do our best to seek him, even after we fall and remain in him, he will answer prayers. So I hope this painting can encourage you, my friend, and give you hope that you were designed to shine in all the seasons, in the roles that you were planted in, but also to make room for the season of life that is about to come so that you can shine there too. So I'm going to go over now these changes that I'll be making to both my YouTube channel and my masterclass. Don't worry, I'll still be making content. I will still be making tutorials. The main difference is I won't be making these really long, real-time tutorials on my YouTube channel. I'll be making shorter time-lapse tutorials just like this one and more frequently. When I have a bit more wiggle room and more time to edit, that's when I'll add more real-time tutorials to my channel. Now for my online animal art masterclass. If you don't know about this class, it's a creative platform for those who are battling anxiety, depression, chronic pain, cancer, to help them find the joy in art again while mastering pet and wildlife art using acrylics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually close temporarily my stallion tier and my dachshund tier and just have my main coon tier open. That tier will not have any changes. The main coon tier will stay put. It'll remain the same. I'll keep adding content to that, but I'll also be making artwork on the side that I don't film. Now I'll also still not be accepting commissions until I say otherwise. This will be the first Christmas that I'll not be accepting commissions since I opened the business. So if you're in currently the stallion tier or the dachshund tier, you can still access all that content as long as you'd like. Check your emails. I have more details in an email that I sent. So make sure you look for that. But guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you endlessly for your support and your understanding too. Now I have a link to this original painting which is available for sale, link down below in the description box, as well as a link to my online animal art masterclass. I'd love to hear from you at any point about these changes, if you have any questions or concerns, or just questions about this style of painting. Be sure to leave them in the comments down below or you can email me that's also down below guys have a blessed day thanks again bye